James or Jim Tiberius Kirk was a Starfleet officer that lived in the 23rd century. During his time in the Starfleet, he was an explorer, a diplomat, sometimes a soldier, and even a time traveler. These adventures, discoveries, and accomplishments made him arguably one of the most famous captains in Starfleet history. He served as the commanding officer on the Constitution-class starship, the USS Enterprise, and the USS Enterprise A, but most of his stories during his time as captain are well known. But what about his younger life? In today's video, we will be looking into the early years of James Tiberius Kirk. Let's get into it. Welcome to Federation Outpost 111. So, James Tiberius Kirk was born on the 22nd of March in 2233 in Iowa on the planet Earth. He was the youngest son of George and Winona Kirk. He had an older brother named George Samuel Kirk, whose story we could cover in another video if you're interested. Jim would leave Earth with his father when he was just a young boy. They stayed on Tarsus IV, a habitable planet in the Alpha or Beta quadrant. However, in 2246, an exotic fungus destroyed most of the human colony's food supplies. 8,000 people were now in danger of starvation. So a politician named Governor Kodos made a rather drastic decision. He ordered the deaths of half of the colony. He chose those that he believed least likely to survive. Therefore, I have no alternative but to sentence you to death. Sadly, supply ships from Earth arrived on Tarsus IV earlier than expected, but not in time to save the lives of the 4,000. A 13-year-old Jim Kirk was one of a small group of witnesses to the massacre. We learn more about this later on in Jim's story during the episode The Conscience of the King, but as this video is about his early years, we will leave that story for another time. Now let's fast forward to 2252, where Jim really started making a name for himself. He enrolled in the Starfleet Academy, hoping to follow in the footsteps of his father. As a young cadet in the academy, he would soon attract the attention of an Irishman named Finnegan. Finnegan would bully and torment Kirk through his first year, mainly through practical jokes. But Kirk would later accept that he was positively grim back in those days, and these experiences are all character building. Kirk was soon involved with a peace mission to Axanar, and his involvement there led to Starfleet Command awarding him with the Palm Leaf of Axanar. He would also undergo pretty extensive training while at the Academy, including hand-to-hand -hand combat, proficiency in oxygen-deficient atmospheres, and even hyper-power circuits. His academic studies introduced him to several men that he encountered later in his career. Among them was John Gill, a noted history professor and cultural observer. Kirk also studied the military strategies of Klingon General Kord, a Klingon military officer who became well known for his strategies and tactics, and he was studied as part of the curriculum during the 2250s. Now let's move forward to his time at CTP, the Command Training Program. A track which was, of course, meant to prepare officers for the responsibility of commanding a starship and crew. This is where Kirk would face the infamous Kobayashi Maru test. This was a no-win scenario that was part of the curriculum for command track cadets at Starfleet Academy in the 23rd century. It was primarily used to assess a cadet's discipline, character, and command capabilities when facing an impossible situation, as there is no legitimate strategy that will result in a successful outcome. The test primarily consisted of the cadet placed in command of a starship, the USS Enterprise. The ship would soon receive a distress signal from the Kobayashi Maru, a civilian freighter within the Klingon neutral zone that had been heavily disabled. Being the only ship in range, the cadet cannot choose to withdraw from the rescue mission and are forced to enter the neutral zone to rescue the vessel in risk of violating the treaties. The ship would be confronted by Klingon battlecruisers, which typically engaged in a firefight. It was considered to be an absolute no-win scenario because it was programmed to be impossible for the cadet to simultaneously save the Kobayashi Maru, avoid a fight with the Klingons, and escape from the neutral zone with the USS Enterprise intact. A cadet's choice of how to handle the rescue operation gave great insight to his or her command and decision-making abilities. Now, when it came time for James T. Kirk to take on this scenario, he took it, and of course he failed. Twice. Before taking it a third time, however, he would reprogram the computer to make it possible to win. 
Kirk was subsequently awarded a commendation for original thinking, and later commented wistfully that his stunt had the virtue of never having been tried. Although Kirk understood that the purpose of this scenario was to confront cadets with the type of situation that they might encounter on duty, he defended his cheating by maintaining that he did not believe in no-win scenarios. He would be the only person to ever beat the Kobayashi Maru. During the mid-2250s, some years after being a midshipman, Kirk rejoined his friend and former instructor, Lieutenant Finney, when they served together aboard the USS Republic. When Finney made a mistake nearly catastrophic to the ship, Kirk logged the incident, which resulted in his friend being reprimanded and put into the bottom of the promotion list. It was also around this same time period that Kirk worked as an instructor at the academy. Here he met cadet Gary Mitchell, a student in his class who would later describe Kirk as a stack of books with legs. We also know that early in his career, he spent a year with Janice Lester, becoming romantically involved. Their relationship soured to a point where Kirk felt she punished and tortured him for their circumstances. She was frustrated for the lack of opportunities for a woman to command a starship, something that Kirk agreed to be unfair. Ultimately, Kirk felt like they would have ended up killing each other if they stayed together, so he left her. Then in 2255, after graduating from the academy, Kirk began serving on the USS Farragut as a phaser gun crew member. This ship was under the command of Captain Garavik. In 2257, the Farragut engaged with a cloud creature at Tycho 4. The creature killed Garavik and 200 of the ship's crew. Farragut's record tapes of the event included Kirk insisting upon blaming himself for the disaster, citing his delay in firing the ship's phaser banks at the creature as he lost consciousness. The ship's executive officer disagreed, stating, Lieutenant Kirk is a fine young officer who performed with uncommon bravery. Then, two years later, Captain Christopher Pike took an interest in Kirk and looked up his file after witnessing Kirk in action as the captain of the Farragut in an alternate timeline. Recognizing that Kirk had the potential to make a good captain for the USS Enterprise and sensing that Kirk was meant to be in command during the coming neutral zone incursion in 2266. Then, through the next few years, rising up through the ranks, it was at the age of just 32 that James T. Kirk took up command of the Constitution-class USS Enterprise from Christopher Pike. With command of the Enterprise came Pike's science officer, a Vulcan named Spock, who would be his first officer. From here, he would go on to explore strange new worlds, seek out new life and new civilizations, to go where no man has gone before. Okay guys, that's it for now. I really hope you enjoyed this first video here on Federation Outpost 111. If you're familiar with any of our other channels, The Broken Sword, The Sixth Ranger, The Batcave, History of Dragon Ball, then you'll hopefully know the type of content that we have coming on this channel. And if you're a fan of Star Trek, I definitely think it could be worth you subscribing. Lots of exciting content coming. Thank you all so much for watching, live long and prosper, and I will see you next time on Federation Outpost 111.